You're going to have a relationship with the Lord where nothing is hidden, nothing is withheld. He's going to share all that's in his heart over time, and you're going to carry everything in your heart to him. That this is a, 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 a open-hearted interaction between his heart and your heart. That's what he's after. Now, the angels don't have that kind of interaction with the Lord, and they never will, but only the redeemed do. So this isn't just a relationship of servanthood where we do tasks for him, but it's this deep, open-hearted, nothing withheld interchange with his heart forever, and there's no shame whatsoever. Now, the significance of shame in paragraph E, the the, the reason, and we all know this, uh, that shame is one of the most powerful forces that hinders receiving love. Uh, even a sincere believer that's, being, that's stuck in shame, they can't receive the love of God very well. They can a little bit, but shame so hinders the ability to receive love, and shame hinders the ability to, res to respond in love. Shame causes us to be so preoccupied with our failure, it so shifts the conversation in our heart. We're so preoccupied on how bad we are and what we did and the implications of it. And the Lord says, I'm going to bring a redemption where you're preoccupied with unveiling the fullness of your heart to me and me unveiling the fullness of my heart to you with no shame hindering in any way whatsoever. I mean, this is a remarkable reality, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And we're talking about some sincere believers. We have weakness. We have failures. But when we own them before the Lord and we repent of them, we really declare war on them that we may stumble them again. But we never are at peace with them. We're always warring against them and repenting of them when we stumble. The Lord says, you can then walk in the confidence of no condemnation in the relationship with me. You can be before me with holding nothing, with no shame at all before me, with confidence. There is no greater reality than having confidence, spiritual reality, than having confidence with the Lord. I mean, when, or I'll say there's no more powerful, emotional, empowering reality than we have confidence with the Lord. When I look at my years in the Lord, when I began to get confidence in Him, confidence that he loved me in my weakness and the confidence that my weak love moved him and so it's a two-way confidence confident that he didn't write me off when i failed but he actually loved me in confidence that when i loved him and my love was weak but he said your love is still real when i had began to grow in confidence in that it made a dynamic shift inside of my heart so that when i would stumble i would run to him instead of from him because shame makes us run from him, and we're preoccupied with our failure and our weakness, and we're not preoccupied in the conversation with who we are to him and who he is to us.